Well, viewers, welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. It's another beautiful afternoon, and I actually have a couple minutes to work on the buggy again. Let's take a look at this cooling system and maybe figure out an intercooler setup while we're at it. So I headed over to the old eBay for some cooling accessories. And this cute little tiny radiator is for a actual Mini, not the BMW Mini Coopers that we know, but the really small ones from you know the 60s, 70s. Got this for engine cooling. It is very small. We'll see if it has the capacity to do what I need, but I do love the tight, compact packaging of it. And then for an intercooler, I grabbed this MR2 intercooler because also, once again, it's very small. This thing's got like a three and a half inch core, uh, two and a half inch ports on it. And just like the radiator, very nice and small. I can stuff this somewhere and make it happen. Being that this is only a 1.4 liter, I mean, the engine is so small, we don't need a ton of charge cooling capacity or coolant cooling capacity. So I think with some good fans, I think I'm gonna be able to get good results out of these smaller type cores. So we'll have some interesting plumbing here. The top of my rad needs to make its way over to the thermostat discharge here on the rear of the engine. And then the lower side of the rad will come from the water pump here. I believe this is the suction side of the water pump. You can see that this thing is really facing in the wrong direction. I'd like to flip this and either get it going this way or cut this off and weld to it and have it come straight out. Yeah, a little cooling in there, eh? Now let's see if GM's doing me any favors here. Okay, well I'm a that's the actual thermostat then. I thought it was on the back of the motor. Yeah, let's see if this thing will mount backwards on here. Son of a biscuit. Of course they had to make this non-symmetrical. Come on. How are we supposed to do anything with these motors if they're gonna be like that? Yeah, so this looks like this thing is one piece with the thermostat. You'd have to push this in and twist it, I guess, to get the thermostat out of this motor. And then this will come apart. Son of a biscuit, why do they gotta do that to me? Hot water comes out of here, into the top of the rad, down through the rad, and into this, back into the engine. I think I have that right. When in doubt, refer to some documentation here. So you can see for the LE2, the radiator outlet hose, which to me means water coming out of the rad and into the engine, is going to that front port on the water pump, while the radiator outlet, radiator inlet, where's that at? <clears throat> the radiator inlet hose on the LE2 is connecting to that, you know, massive five-way connector that we were evaluating there, meaning that the water will be coming out of this towards the radiator. Some rubber dampers here. Gonna rubber mount the whole rad and the intercooler because don't want that flying around. This will give it a little bit of uh, isolation from the rest of everything that's going on. Of course, the motor is gonna be twerking a little bit and so is the rad, so it's good to just keep these things all isolated. <laughs>
Here's my first shot at the cooling system. We did a lot of work to this radiator. Adapted it to inch and a quarter ports to match the LE2. Put this stand pipe off of here. The reason for this is that my exhaust down pipe is gonna be coming straight off the turbo and then come up this way. So I intentionally have a hose that dives down here and then we pick up low on the radiator to allow ample space for that down pipe. Front hose fits nice. Um, I ended up flipping that thermostat housing. As you saw, that was kind of a job. Custom port down here. Patched up the top port on the rad. So the rad really is, there's nothing left to it really. I ended up remaking the whole thing. It's probably better rads out there I could have bought. Anyway, um, onto here, basically just loop the heater core lines with like one of these LS motor heater core loops. And now I'm working on the turbo feed. So the way this was is you'd come out of this housing here up and it would split back to a coolant reservoir and then it would also run to the turbo, turbo cooling. I'm not gonna have a coolant reservoir. That's gonna be the radiator in this case. So I'm going to essentially cut this off here and just run this housing straight to this and eliminate that whole T leg there. Something just that simple. So that way it comes out of here, goes right to the turbo. There's no teeing off to an external reservoir. Interesting tidbit I noticed when I cut this pipe apart here is that GM has this orifice down pretty small. That's probably intentional. That's probably some type of intentional restriction to the water cooling on the turbo. We'll try it without it, but if I do have cooling issues or bleeding issues, uh, I'll have to come back to this video because I'm gonna totally forget that I saw that. Yeah, I do wanna make some improvements to this. I wanna move this radiator up a little bit so I have a little more headspace between that top turbo line and the rad cap here. It'll make it easier to bleed. Also gives me a little more opportunity to shroud into it. Maybe I'll end up with a bigger rad in general. We'll see. It is kind of small, but keep in mind, it's only a 1.4 liter. And you know, it's only dissipating 150 horsepower when I'm using 150 horsepower. Most of the time, I can't be using that power because everything's too tight. If this was a buggy that I was gonna use like in the sand dunes where you're just under load the whole time, absolutely this thing would probably require more cooling, but I don't think it's going to require too much for the application I use it in. I know I said I was gonna do the intercooler and cooling system this episode. Uh, the intercooling system's turning into a bit of a job, so I'll probably make that its own episode. So let me know what you think about this little cooling system here. I think all the basics are there. I still think the rad is a little small, but only time will tell with that. That's not an urgent need to get that fixed. And I'm not gonna know until I get it out on the trail and see what it actually does. So I will be keeping an eye on that temperature. I will be putting a hefty fan on the back of it. Let's see what it does. But otherwise, I think this is gonna be very solid. We got a lot of action happening on the buggy right now. I'm in overdrive trying to get this thing ready for summer. We got intercooling coming. We got custom trailing arms coming. We got an exhaust coming, all kinds of crap. So just stay tuned. We will have this thing running soon. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. I'll catch you next time.